Greetings everybody, this is Henri from the Yags Blue support team. Welcome to this third part of our hands-on video about integrating an INS OEM in a vehicle. In this part, we'll see the integration through a mock-up vehicle we choose to use an IUV. It will consist of four steps. In the video, we'll have first the mechanical integration. The second part will be about electrical integration. The third part will be some extra pro tips and more pro tips about powerful features that make your vehicle integration and your design very powerful. At last, I'll have Cora from RTS to provide us some user perspectives about his experience integrating the FinC3 OEM in a vehicle of his design. So for the mechanical integration in my vehicle, uh, I have plenty of choice uh, of, um, of design. Here I will make it very simple and will concentrate a little bit more on the axis and conventions and orientation of the unit. Uh, this AUV here is on the side and I will fit uh, my INS OM kit uh, like this. So I will choose to use still the same axis for IX1, but you see IX2 of the INS will become IX3 of the vehicle. For the electronic boards, I install them as I have room. Like I said in the previous part, I could choose to do like this or like that. Here, I'll keep it simple and do like this. So now that I have properly integrated in my vehicle, I would have to fit it, uh, take care a little bit of uh, uh, heat for power dissipation. Here I have um, metal plates, I choose to keep them so it will safe dissipate through your vehicle. We'll see in the electrical parts about power consumption. So let's say this AUV body uh, is IX1 axis um, along this way and IX3 axis along this way. My unit is integrated kind of on the side. IX2 of the unit will become IX3 of the vehicle body. Let's go back to the web interface of the unit and configure this accordingly. So in the web interface, I'll go in the mechanical parameters and I'll choose to fit um, the unit accordingly. So we'll see that the attaching plate side is changing direction while the board side is still on the back of the vehicle. Here I didn't really prepare how it's going to be this side or that side, so I will use it very visually. Uh, I just play with the different options and to see uh, when I have IX2 of the unit becoming IX3 of my user interface. So I think that's going to be this, this one. You see now visually on my user interface, I have the same that I have here. The unit is on the side, on this side and I can validate the setting in the user interface by doing so. So now the user interface prompts me to re restart the unit, which I will do. And so now as the unit is rebooting, it is virtually, uh, it was like this, and now it's virtually like this in the vehicle as I have a side view of my vehicle. So those three axes like this become like that with this change of configuration. It's very important for later mechanical integration because I will, for the purpose of the show, measure the offset to my USB-L transponder. To proceed, to proceed uh, with the lever arm and offsets of my USB-L transponder, I will have to physically measure accurately the lever arm from here to here to here along the three axis of the vehicle because now my IMU, my INS is in the vehicle reference frame and I will have to take um, a measure according to what we call at IXBlue the P-point, so the center of measurement of the IMU sub-assembly. The P-point is 
is given to you through the schematic in the user documentation. And it's about um, a little bit on the board side here and a little bit in the middle here. So for the show purpose, I'll, I'll just use this to, to this and this to this for the two uh, offsets. So to measure them, I use uh, a ruler or uh, here a ruban, ruban tape uh, to measure uh, the lever arms. And so to, very to make it very visual uh, and to implement in the user interface. So that's 23 centimeters along AX1 axis. And around the middle here, that's six centimeter along AX3 axis. So now I will set them up inside the user interface for my USB-L sensor lever arm. So I go to the input menu. I choose the USB-L I previously configured. And if I scroll down uh, the configuration, I will be access the lever arm. So now I can set up a 23 centimeter um, as an offset. So you see it's 23 centimeter forward of the IMU. So it's, it's about right. 23 centimeter forward of the IMU. AXV2, let's pretend it's, it stays at a zero value. We, m we choose to work it in 2D to make the case study more um, understandable. And AX3 will be six centimeter. And you see again, it's very visual, uh, six centimeter up the INS body. So it's about here, six centimeter up the INS body. So you see this interface makes it very visual, very easy for you. Uh, to work in, a, in a, a little bit complicated situation because by design I had to turn 90 degrees on the flank the IMU body, uh, the IMU subassembly in my AOV body. About electrical integration, it will be about uh, a bunch of things. First, about power. So now we should not anymore use our lab power supply. We should use the, uh, the power lines from the AUV body. And it's important to remind that uh, the power supply will be, uh, grounds will be independent from the serial input output grounds. Um, for the purpose of this uh, demonstration, I will keep this as is. And I'll, I'll simulate a wiring of USB-L sensor over serial through this connector. For that purpose, I will need to prepare in advance specialist tooling. Um, I'd like to, to show them to you today in this video because um, those uh, specialist tooling sometimes take a lot of time to order. Uh, so it's important to have them in advance, especially if you plan to have an agile vehicle integration. Um, and so I have this tool here to, to put the wire in the pins, and I have this tool here to fit the pins in the connector. So I will need those two. I will need this connector, which is provided uh, in the scope of delivery. And I will need uh, a little bit of wire uh, to wire my fake uh, USB-L sensor, and uh, a little bit of uh, pins to wire the pins. Uh, Likewise, in the user documentation, we provide you with the detailed uh, input-output um, uh, pin numbers and uh, order. Um, you can see here a small notch on this connector, so it will give you a very visual uh, uh, knowledge of where is pin 1 and, and, and pin 2 and so on. Um, in order to, to proceed with the wiring, so uh, I will use this tool here. Um, I have to make sure it has the proper settings and, and the proper uh, positioner. And then I have to fit here uh, that tiny pin, uh, which has a direction uh, into the, the positioner. As it is uh, properly fitted, 
then I just have to, to, to prepare my cable of the right size. So there's an AWG number for that. And I fit the cable into the pin and secure by clicking to the end. Now my uh, cable is fit. I can visually uh, test uh, by pulling a little bit and, and it's fine. And now I fit it in the right pin. So let's say this one. Um, I can position it like this. And then with the tool, um, I'll fit the cable like this and press. I should hear a little click. Click, you see. And now my cable is secure. So the last thing I have to do is to do the other pins um, and fit the cable in my uh, connector here that I can secure here with locking sleeves. It's important to remember about this electronic design. Uh, when we conceived this product at IX Blue, we wanted to provide you with the lowest current consumption, the lowest power draw. Uh, this unit is taking you about 12 watts because we wanted to keep in mind uh, outstanding performances of navigation, but also uh, autonomous vehicles requiring uh, longer autonomies. Uh, for that purpose, the design of the electronic boards uh, do not have any more optical isolation in between each port. Um, this uh, makes, unlike the other IX Blue product, that every uh, input output over serial share a common ground. It's not an issue in itself, uh, but I'd like to remind that because sometimes it's confusing with the other products at IX Blue. Uh, just keep in mind the power uh, ground is isolated from the serial ground and from the mechanical ground. So we give you the, the utmost flexibility for your IUV design in terms of electrical integration. Uh, you could consider, for example, in your own uh, interfaces to have uh, optical protections or protections of your choice of design. Last thing uh, before uh, we proceed is to, to see a little bit of more uh, power user features. Uh, some features that I think I need to show you uh, that makes this product very much uh, standalone OEM. So here it's about two other menus I'd like you to discover with me. Uh, the first one is what we call the advanced position filtering. So it gives me access uh, to a lot of settings with the input sensors. Like we said, we can interface to a lot of sensors with this unit and we give you access to um, advanced settings of those sensors into the algorithm of the processing boards. Uh, this allow you to maintain uh, a very tuned design with your desired application. And so for example, here I use the USB-L case. Uh, so I'd like my vehicle to take in priority USB BL position over uh, GNSS position, for example. So I can set that up. Um, and you can see that I can also filter my USBL. Sometimes out there, USBL is a little bit noisy. Um, eventually, I want to limit the input standard deviation of the USBL data. Um, or I would like to reject data that have uh, too much of uh, uh, announced standard deviation. So this is exactly where I can set that up. Um, so this, is make this uh, page makes it very uh, tunable for you for your vehicle design and integration. The other menu I'd like to show you is the simulation mode. <laughs> this simulation mode allow me uh, to uh, virtually output data. So you see in this menu, I can set up a heading with a period and an amplitude value. By doing that, so let's do, um, I don't know, uh, um, 30 degree uh, heading over uh, 30 seconds with uh, 10 
degree amplitude. And so now every 30 seconds, my heading will go from 20 to 40. And if I do that, um, I can do that on a lot of things, position, sensors, error message, status message. It now you can visually see my heading is changing, okay? It's simulated. And by the way, the, the system is telling me through a status message it is in simulation mode. But basically, it allows me to test the other components of my vehicle. For example, if I have a navigation computer that I want to test on um, output data of the, IN, the INS, or if I have extra other sensors that will read data from the INS feed, I can very much test and simulate uh, fake data f in simulation for test purpose and integration purpose. It allows me to have the, the best design, the best integration possible of my vehicle. Now it's time for me to call Cor, and uh, Cor will give you uh, some very interesting user perspectives about his experience integrating exactly the same unit in his product, uh, the Nemo. Cor, um, over to you. Oh, thank you, Henry. Yes, I'm going to talk about the user perspective of integrating the XP Fins 3 in the Nemo that you can see next to me here. I work at RTS, uh, which is a company that was founded in 2002, and we are based in Norway, and we uh, we work with Subsea Electronics and developing Subsea products. Uh, looking um, quickly on the electrical level, uh, we, we found that FinC3 had high quality components uh, in an enclosed electronic stack. Uh, the connectors uh, were very robust, uh, and that's a very good thing. Uh, and it was also easy to connect uh, to it compared to many other OEM solutions. Uh, but we saw there was some issues with the documentation uh, that the other Stute 2 porch uh, was not isolated. Yes, going over to mechanical, there was some um, issues there with um, that was not a standard hole for the double pins. Uh, the pins used to orientate the unit very accurately. But also was um, laser cut the holes for the double pins, and that means that it's a tiny bit of metallic inside the holes, and that's so we had to remove that to accurately fit the unit. Uh, also, another thing was that it was uh, bended steel used in the construction, and it's always it's difficult to get bended steel accurately. Uh, in terms of performance, it was uh, yeah beyond uh, our expectations. It was much much better, uh, but uh, we also see that the specification of the unit uh, it's it's made uh, for a wide range of aiding sensors from different manufacturers, and that means that these aiding sensors are of very different uh, quality accuracy. And that will limit the specification. And the specifications are the um, deciding factor where you can deploy the unit. If you have very high accurate sensor, you have the best, it's calibrated for this area you're going to work in, and you have a very good deployment, uh, you are going to have much better results. Uh, but you can't use it. <laughs> the specification don't agree. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, yeah. Thanks, thank Carl. <laughs> yeah. It's it's indeed uh, something we spoke a lot over our um, customer support exchange uh, as you were, uh, uh, how to say, uh, integrating the product. But uh, I'm very happy you give us uh, this user perspective. Uh, it's a little bit kind of what I said as well through this uh, series of videos. Um, 
um, about performances. I'm happy you, 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 you report to us those outstanding performances. It's also the result of your uh, outstanding integration. <laughs> Th thank you, Care. So, so to finish this video, um, four things I'd like to, to remember. This was a very easy and modular integration. We've seen we could um, integrate or interface many different ways. It was fast and easy to configure. Of course, uh, it's a mock-up scenario, but the, the idea was to give you the, the feeling that under an hour, we can already play and configure this kit. Uh, like we say, that there is those solutions, and we like to think it's a standalone integration, meaning uh, everything's inside the unit for you to integrate in your vehicle. And also one of the things is that it's mass production ready. Should you have a fleet of vehicles you'd like to install with those products, we've made things we think easy for you. Thanks for watching this show and see you soon in the fourth part with some tips and tricks about this integration. Thank you for watching.